Good day, Trinidad Tobago. I tried to do two videos today. Um, both of them had difficulty with their audio. I don't even know what if this one is having difficulty or not. Um, so I'm trying here. If you're there, the first couple of people, if you could tell me what the audio reception and, and for the people who are coming after, I apologize that we opening the video talking about that, but I need to make sure that you can hear me. Um, is the audio okay? You're hearing okay? This is gonna be the, this is gonna take the place of the Monday night video because we started we, we started this morning talking about what we get for our taxes in this country. And when you and well I guess we could start right now. Is the volume good? Are you hearing okay? Because I need to know. I'm not gonna be guided by the numbers because I know that this is the middle of the day. What's the time now? The time now is 20 past 2. So I know that it's difficult. I don't know what um I don't know what audience is gonna be like now. But you're gonna be you're gonna be able to watch it later. It's 20 past 2. So I'll try to do the full hour, right? And this issue of taxation. And what we get for our taxes is, I think, this is the conversation we need to have as a nation. Now that the government has seen it fit to play games with the economy for two and a half years, fake a recession, and now that it suits them, recession done, we have no facts to back up their fake recession, and we have even less facts to end it. I want to tell Trey and Tobago, the mismanagement of the economy needs to be focused like a laser beam on the taxation we pay and what is being done with our tax dollars. Everything in that treasury is tax dollars. And now it is time to involve local and even international court if we have to go to the Privy Council. Governments have to be put on notice. It is time to set precedent that we are not going to accept this piss poor representation in exchange for our taxation. We have to have a conversation, a national conversation. When you hear the term Declaration of Independence, and my throat horse, it's been a long day. I've been at this since half past five this morning. So if I sound in horse, apologize. I apologize. When you hear the term Declaration of Independence in the United States nowadays, it sounds sexy. It's a Declaration of Independence and it sounds wow. You know, it's a sexy sounding thing. But when the Declaration of Independence was served on the king, it was an act of war. It was an act of war. The, 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 um, those who were ruled over the subjects of the crown decided to, to, to take their independence. They didn't seek independence like Trinidad and Tobago went to the, the British monarchy and presented a case, you know. They said, we declare ourselves independent. That started a war. The British came to reclaim their colonies. I have a little audio here, three minutes, I want to share it with you. I don't want you all to get bored, but it's a history lesson. Because you need to understand, and if it wasn't for Spain and France, because Spain and France jumped in that war and defended the colonies. America, the United States of America, that exists today, wouldn't exist if Spain and France didn't rush to their aid. But Benjamin Franklin and George Washington and fellas like these, they were at the tip of the spear. When you read history now, it sounds like, all of these people met and came up with all of these plans because history is written in an orderly fashion. But history doesn't happen in an orderly fashion. Benjamin Franklin was summoned to Britain to explain what was going on in America because when, when the British decided to cover the cost of expanding the colonies, they needed to tax paper and tea and rum and stuff supply to the colonies but the colonies thought that they weren't getting the representation that they deserved and that they weren't prepared to pay those taxes and they rebelled this is how the united states of america the fortress of liberty the great land of democracy exists they existed by saying this injustice had to done and i'm saying to trinidad and tobago if if you have water 24 7 turn this video off if the roads that you drive on to get to where you're going to and fro are properly well paved and maintained turn this video off if the school that your child goes to 
is a good functional school, turn this video off. If when you get sick or you have an emergency, you call the ambulance, they're there in four or five minutes, turn this video off. If you find yourself in the hospital and they treat you in a timely manner, in casualty, turn the video off. If you can afford food, turn the video off. If it is possible for you to own a home on your income, turn the video off. If you feel like you get represented in that parliament, turn the video off. If between the last election and now, or at any time between any electoral cycle, your member of parliament comes back into your community and calls public meetings to discuss the, the legislative agenda and government's plans and policies before the parliament, if that happens, turn this video off. If you understand what takes place with our oil and gas, the systems under which it is sold, and to whom, and to how much, and what are our profits, if you understand why Petrochin, it costs us $17 a barrel of oil to get into profit, whereas everybody else, including Guyana and Jamaica, is $20, 19 turn the video off. If you know who, is, who owns our pitch lake, and who gets that money, turn this video off. If you live in Tobago and you have access to government goods and service, turn the video off. If you could go on a website and find where the billions of dollars that were issued, treasury tax dollars that were issued to the THA for the last 15 years and get an accounting for them, turn this video off. If your banks are taking advantage of you and there is somebody that you can go to and write and call and have an intervention to protect you against the plundering going on in the banks, against bank depositors and citizens who get no interest on their money, who have no access to credit, who can't get US dollars even though the fake recession is over, turn this video off. But if your life in Trinidad and Tobago is reflective of a third world, shithole, failed nation, stay tuned. If you live in a country that is a banana republic, where the 41 elected representatives in parliament behave like monkeys, that every time you turn on the parliamentary channel, you are ashamed of what passes for representation in your country, pay attention. If you have no idea whatsoever as to how a car that sells for 20,000 US dollars lands to sell in Trinidad for half a million dollars. If you don't understand how goods manufactured in Trinidad cheaper everywhere else in the world than in Trinidad, you need to pay attention. There are a lot of pocket economists in Trinidad who went to UE and UTT and went under the mango tree and get their economics degree that will talk a lot of bullshit for you. But just ask questions. How is it possible in a country this wealthy, this pregnant with so much potential, our dollar is one seventh the United States dollar and has less than one fifteenth the value. Use all the fancy terms you want economies of scale, supply and demand, bullshit running, bring a mop on a broom. Because I don't think these people ever really listen to what comes out their mouth, but I do. I have been asking this country to explain to itself how it came to have been in a recession. For two and a half years, when the entire global economy rose three and a half percent in 2017 and is on schedule to rise four percent in 2018, how it come to be that we alone in a recession? And I ask, who arrived at this arbitrary value of our dollar? Who decides where Pitch Lake money goes? How come? Tobago could be destroyed. I mean literally destroyed. The jackass from Mason Hall, who Mason Hall don't want back in. Rowley, take my advice, you know. While you're in prime minister, while you're prime minister and you're in government and you could stunt. 
Stand for them and they go take you on a little bit. Don't go over there when you see you walk down on the fire your ass, you know. Because Tobago and Trinidad eh? and they're waiting on your ass. You hurt people, you know. Tobago doesn't understand to this day, and I can't fathom why Tobago is not the tourist capital of the entire world. Understand this. The largest brain coral, the oldest old growth forest, and the only, the only nylon pool on the planet, all three exist in Tobago. We own Pigeon Point, whose jetty with the little hut on the end, became the international symbol for tropical tourism. How come that, that island that was fought over than more than any other Caribbean island in the entire Caribbean research history, at one point in time, Tobago had the most expensive real estate in the entire Caribbean, probably the world. Tobago land was real expensive. How come that jewel of the Caribbean outside of the hurricane belt is not the tourist capital of the world? How come? How is this? You think Bali, the Bahamas, Virgin Islands, you think their tourist product drops off from the sky? I mean, they're excellent raw material to work with like we do, but they develop and maintain what they had to work with, to create. They have tourist product, and all of them know what I am about to tell you, that a proper government running Tobago properly will destroy them. Bali, Bahamas, and Virgin Islands have nothing on Tobago. Tobago is supposed to be the most impressive tourist destination in the world. But we've had knuckle draggers Little racist children who all they bring to the conversation, I say Indian, I voted Indian. I black, I voted black. And fine, you know what? It's a democracy. You don't need to have a brain to vote. But you should at least be able to look around and tell the difference between shit and sugar. When rain falling, I'm assuming that should be the means test. If you could tell that rain falling, come and shelter, you should be allowed to vote. If you can't, if you think that PNM bullshit versus UNC bullshit for 56 years is governance and you can defend your side of the bullshit, turn this off now. This ain't for you. This ain't for you. If you're living large on cocaine dollars, you're partying DDI on corruption dollars, and you think that for as long as Philip talking, we need to shut him up, turn this off. Turn it off. Because you see, Trinidad Tobago is a broken nation that has never had representation. Since we dropped the Union Jack, it's been one long rape fest. Line them up and jam them hard. And that's us. We've never had representation for our taxation. There are sidewalks and pavements in this country where the manhole covers that cover the box drains that is our entire irrigation system, our entire water management system is take the bounty of fresh rain that falls in the hills and wash it out to the sea. That's our whole plan. We have nothing else, no problem. If you vote assholes into power, don't expect anything more than asshole logic. So we have no dams and no water retention ponds, and we don't use the water that we get in the bounty of the rainy season to prepare for the dry season. Forget that. We're jackasses. This is a jackass race. Don't expect more than that. Because the truth of our entire matter is we've never been properly governed at no time. No matter how much you want to undress Basley Opande and lie down with him. No matter how much you think Kamala is the sexiest Indian they ever see. No matter how bad you want to rub Rowley Ballhead. Those things don't matter. It doesn't, this is not a beauty contest. This is who could do the work, hire them. So far, you've hired jackasses. Look at it. Look at it. Pande is less jackass than Manning because Pande does use Brill Cream and Manning does use Vaseline. Same jackassery. Because when both of those jackasses came out of office, Pande and Manning educated at Presentation College. So Presentation College should apologize. Those two jackasses, when they came out of office, healthcare was still shit. 
No, we weren't food self-sufficient. Our education system was producing, to quote the current prime minister, wild hyenas from African jungle. We had a police service that was less police and less service than anything else, where governments and the police complaints authority all said that the police, uh, police service is the biggest criminal gang in the country. Neither of those jackasses. You see, police could fix, but $3 trillion can't fix it. Healthcare, globally could fix, $3 trillion can't fix that. Everybody could get water for all. There was a time there was a jackass, Fitzgerald Hines, was the Minister of Public Utilities, and he went on Hamer's show to talk about his stint in England, and he told Hamer. He was so impressed that every day he turned on the pipe like a monkey, nah, like a real monkey. Every time he turned on the tap, water came out, and he was impressed. This is the Minister of Public Utilities of Trent Tobago, and Hamer didn't ask him. Fitzy, why we can't do that here? On an island, surrounded by water, that gets 15 times the, the, the water that we need every year as rain fall from the sky. Why we couldn't do that here? I just found out that besides a police complaints authority, we have a police complaints division and a professional services division. All of that to supervise one police service and can't. Nobody in this country, nobody, nobody, nobody could explain what our army is for. Nobody can tell us what our Coast Guard is for. Because we still have more drugs passing through this country per capita than just about any country in the world. Where is the representation for our taxation? And now, the imp from Maraval, Colm Shit Snake Inbert, just passed into law another tax on you. Property tax. It is a penalty for doing well. He is disgusted that other people are able to work hard, sacrifice, save money as a home so they could leave something for their family. That jackass has decided to pick your pocket there too. Now you have to know all of this because your taxation pays all of this. Your taxation. Every time you go and buy bubbly bubblegum, kiss cake, juicy juice, whatever it is you're spending your money on, spinning rims, all of those things come with duty, VAT, and other taxes. When you get paid, they take out NIS and income tax. All of that money that you are spending pays for president, parliament, police. All three that fails you. We have a president for no reason or purpose anybody could rationalize other than to hold a book and tell you how to swear. I mean, that's not enough for the millions we spend on the office of the president. You need to abolish that bullshit now. We have a parliament that to this date has not passed one effective law that takes care of the people. We don't have a beverage container bill. We can't get a handicap parking bill. We can't get an environmental or animal bill of rights. We have a children's authority that their job is to play pin the tail on the donkey because that's all they seem to do. Forest children get caught, caught stunting with AR-15s in Kamuto. Everybody tripping over themselves to tell a better lie. And the children authority, who are the most authority, was supposed to go and pick up Farris children from Farris and his wife because they put those children in danger. If the son, while stunting and posing for Facebook, had accidentally blown the daughter's head off, it would have been different. We'd have a whole big different story then. So why not be preemptive and proactive now? But we don't have to. The Children's Authority job is to exist. So some one percenter could get $150,000 a month rent for a piece of shit property that he has from lease from the Port Authority for $5 a year. That's all this country is about. Taxation exists in this country to rape you. That's what it does. You have a Ministry of Legal Affairs that is a function of the Ministry of the Attorney General Office that has a Consumer Affairs Division in it that does fire truck all for its money. So when we expose the cost of price and the prices of things and show you how, how badly you're being gouged, they can't answer because they don't know. We do not have representation in this country. We do not have. I want to tell you again, a little girl was raped inside a police station by the ranking police officer 
and they had the mattress left over as evidence where the actual act took place. And that case took 17 years. If ever you needed a reason to fire the current Chief Justice and retroactively fire the last five, that case alone. But that case came hot on the heels. The guy who broke into Stevens and Johnson's, that took 25 years. 25 years. But what does your representation do? Your representation, like how Massey figure out, if I fool people about the environment, I can get them to pay 50 cents for a bag that I give away free, that I pay pennies for and make a 17 million a year. What your representation does is looks for problems to apply solutions at a cost to you. That's all you get. Nothing works in Trinidad and Tobago. Nothing. Nothing works. The Speaker of the House is now in contempt of the House for failure, listen to me, for failure to ask for a fit-for-work certificate and a sick leave for Maxi Coffee. So the Speaker of the House, who continues to grant leaves of absence to Maxi Coffee without any evidence, is assisting Maxi in defrauding the state and robbing the Treasury, drawing money under false pretenses for jobs he can never again do. Assisting Keith Rowley and his band of malcontents and never-do-wells, assisting them in their grand conspiracy to defraud and milk and take whatever they could. That is what is going on in your government. So when Prime Minister Keith Rowley pick up $3 million he did not have the authority to spend and spent it on Maxi Coffee who did not have the authority to receive it, that was a crime, according to the most basic law, fraudulent conversion, if not outright theft. But the Commissioner of Police and the Director of Public Prosecutions don't know that. There is nobody in Trinidad and Tobago set up to address these matters. The only person raising these issues in the public space continuously, daily, is me. And I'm in court now. Now a bright little law firm has come up with the idea. Let's just stop him from being able to speak. Let's file defamation lawsuits against him. So, because they have this trick. If somebody serves you a pre-action protocol letter, you're not supposed to speak about the issue until the case called. And when they find out, in Trinidad and Tobago, your parliament used the people's need for representation and said, little black boys, the evidence is in the Hansard. Little black boys stuck in a jail system because they have no money. So they have no access to lawyer or bail. So they stuck. If they had pleaded guilty, the moment they had get arrested, they would have served the maximum time and come out of the jail. You have people trapped in the jail who are there longer than the worst sentence that could have been handed down to them and they're still no closer to getting out. So what did Basdeo Pande and crew do? Basdeo Pande and crew, Kamla Pasan, Misesa and crew, all of these UNC people, because they're not talking this, Ishan Steve still. The ghost of Ishan Steve from Piaco Airport come on Horn Tree with Section 34. Because they're still trying to get Ishan Steve off. Our DPP office spent a hundred million dollars trying to prosecute them for thiefing a billion dollars, and we ain't get that back yet. But they decided that they will fool us and create a law and tell us it is the Free the Black Boy law. We call it Section 34, but it was the Free the Ishan Steve law. And when the PNM realized that the law that they voted for was the Free Ishan Steve, the PNM started a march against themselves. And of course, Trinidad media, Judy Raymond, who at some point was sleeping with Keith Rowley, had no problem bullshitting the nation for her man. No problem at all. This is what you're dealing with in Trinidad Tobago, you know. Media, where most of the giggly Barbie dolls sleep in with government ministers because they have blue light itis and they want somebody to pay for their apartment. This is Trinidad and Tobago. So the PNM march against itself and the country say, well, we'll march with them too. It's like when this guy asked, he said, let me get this straight. We bombing Syria because Syria bombed Syria. That's what we did in Trinidad and Tobago. We joined the PNM in marching against the, the, the freaking law that the PNM voted for. But no problem. We repeal Section 34. So all of those tens of millions of dollars that it cost to make that law, we throw it in the dustbin. And guess who paid the price? The little black boys 
who's still inside the jail. Still inside the jail. And today, you have Vassan Barat, Stephen Cady, Stacey Rupner, and Ambassador Pandey stunting like they have the answers to the questions they couldn't read when they was in office. The same Vassan who all over Trinidad talking like he have a plan, didn't have a clue when he had three ministries. Three. All of a sudden, Stephen Cady's know everything. But when he was in office, knew nothing. Because representation under the PNM and the UNC is a big fat zero. Your job is to sit up, shut up, and try to look intelligent. Draw government money, play with little girls in the Hyatt, and drive through traffic lights with your blue lights on. And your whole work. Anything else, we will handle. Ask a fellow in the UNC named Dave Tanku. You ever hear that name? Secretary General. General Secretary, wherever the ass he is. UNC, ask Kamala. Ask Kamala. Ask Pandey. Ask Rowley. Ask Rowley who making the real money in China and Tobago. Little black hen chicken who line up to wave bodies, eh? Scream is we time now. It's not for you, friend. It's not for you. Sufferation for you. Your work is to just say, you take food out in their mouth, now we go eat it. That is the bullshit of what passes for representation in this country. The question the intelligent people have to ask themselves every single time is this. Are there more intelligent people in this country than jackass racists foolish enough to accept a ham sandwich and a warm juice and a jersey in exchange for their vote in a country that's supposed to be the richest nation in the world? Trinidad and Tobago. I asked last week if shipping made Dubai and Singapore some of the wealthiest nations in the world. Shipping could make Trinidad wealthy. If tourism made Bali, Virgin Islands, and Bahamas, some of the richest nations in the world, tourism could do it for Trinidad and Tobago. They have nobody to compare a pitch to, but China know what the pitch is. China know the value of our pitch. Even if we don't, black children can fill their belly with mud. They don't care as long as somebody getting money in their pocket. And I dare you, that's what you're voting for. So the question I want to ask you today and I have a, a question on my wall. What do we get for the taxes that we pay? What do we get? The police cannot find the people who are stealing the metal covers from the manholes. So they get away scot-free. Somebody else gets a contract to make manhole covers out of concrete that bigger than the hole, so they rest it on top of it. So you're walking across a pavement that you have to pay attention to because every couple of feet, there is a four-inch slab of concrete for you to trip over. If you trip, and you don't pay attention, and you get damaged, it's casualty for you. And trust me, that's what you call escalating a bad situation to worse, because you don't want that. So when you're walking on Trent and Bagel sidewalks, pay attention. Here, court here for you. Justice here for you. Settlement is not for you. Here, I'm doing my endeavor best to be as polite as possible. People seem to think that Martin Luther King, Gandhi, and Obama could have come to Trinidad and Tobago and changed the way we think. And I'm telling you, those three would have made them cuss. Gandhi would have grown here. They would have made them three cuss. Jesus Christ in Trinidad would have dropped the cross on the ground and leave. He said, oh, they're full of shit. Oh, they're serious. This can't be real. This cannot be real. 56 years, $3 trillion dollars, and you have nothing, not one thing, to show for it. And you're still waking up every morning and putting your ass in traffic like somehow it will magically get better. You're mad. You have to be mad. You have to be insane to sit your ass in the same traffic every day and don't complain. Children have become men and women in the back seats of cars in this country. Three trillion dollars and 56 years and nothing to show, but people want to talk about Pandey and Manning and Kamala and Keith. All you mad. mad is it, all you had to be mad. All you had to be mad. This could not continue in a real country. In the United States of America, what became the United States of America? Hear the story now, don't go nowhere. It's short.
No taxation without representation. This relates to rights and responsibilities because the colonists were taxed by the king and had to go by his rules. The colonists refused. You hear this? King George III, ruler of the original 13 colonies, had a huge problem. After the French and Indian War, he was in need of money to make up for what he spent. The king decided to tax the colonies on paper, sugar, salt, tea, and a bunch of other British goods. The colonists didn't agree with the tax and most couldn't afford it. They formed the Stamp Act Congress in order to voice their opposition to the tax and made James Otis their leader. But however, their concerns went unheard and in November, the law was enacted. While some colonists accepted this, most did not. They organized a tax on the homes of tax collectors. Groups known as the True Sons of Liberty sprang up in New York and Massachusetts in direct response to the act. They actively organized opposition to it with propaganda and boycotts of British goods. They were responsible for serious riots in both colonies. This opposition soon spread to other territories and was making the tax impossible to collect. To the seeds of the United States of America, the fortress of liberty, the grand democracy, it started. Charles Watson, the appointed prime minister, had some sympathy for the colonists and asked Ben Franklin to give testimony to the House of Commons about the impact the Stamp Act was having in America. He summoned Benjamin Franklin to explain to them why they have riots going on in America, why the, colony, why the colonies acted up. He stated that in his opinion, if it wasn't repealed, it would alienate the colonists further and most importantly, have an effect on the trade. Now, a tax fired Margaret Thatcher. A tax, the poll tax. Do your research. A tax created the United States of America. Because if at this point, the House of Commons had repealed that stamp tax in the United States of America, it wouldn't happen. There would have been no revolution. There would be no war of independence. Believe that. Ben Franklin was instrumental in getting the act repealed in March of 1776. However, the same day the Declaratory Act was passed. This specifically assured the British rule over the colonies and its right to impose taxes. You see what Britain did? Britain agreed with the colonies and repealed the Stamp Act and created a next act called the Declaratory Act, which was more, it was, it, it was more, more taxes was to come in that. That is why the, the Americans revolted. Then in 1773, the British Parliament enacted the Tea Act, which gave East India Company the monopoly on the American tea trade. This was yet another way they paid taxes with no representation. The militia patriots in Massachusetts organized the Boston Tea Party. They dumped tea in the Boston Harbor valued at 10,000 pounds. In today's money, that would be almost two million dollars. This- Let me tell you something. The United States of America exists because the people were unwilling to accept taxation without representation. In Trinidad and Tobago, I want you, forget me, I keep telling all of this, you know, forget me. Don't study me at all and why do it. Study you. In this country, think of one thing, just one thing, that you get as value for your money, for the taxes that you pay. I want you to understand this. Eh? More than 50% of your income is spent in direct taxes. You know? Everything that you buy, at least 50% of that is pure tax. You know? Duty, VAT, those are taxes. More than half of the cost of everything you buy is tax. So you tell me, better yet, tell you, what do you get in exchange for this taxation? I cannot believe that this country rolled over and let this jackass pass a property tax in a country where it is easier for a man to give birth to a cow than to own a home. When you finally own a home, this little stunted imp, this albino monkey, come to interfere with your home? 
that if you can't pay the property tax, you're going to lose it? How did this happen? After Napoleon Robert, Raymond Robinson passed VAT to remove stamp duty, to remove duty, and we keep duty and VAT, how is it possible that our people are so freaking stupid? What is wrong with us? Trinidadians, black, white, red, green, and every shade in between. We have a common genetic mistake. How are we so stupid? How are we so foolish? How is it so easy to molest? How is it so easy to divide and fool us? How? How is it? Tell me now. I need to know what went wrong. What is the cure? Help me find the solution. I will do it. I will administer it. I'll stand on the corner and give everybody come for medicine. It will fix your mind. It will free your brain. It will take you and see and peer them out of their friggin' thoughts. What they did. <laughs> The same oligarchs that finance the same two corrupt racist and broken parties, the PNM and the UNC, own the media. You think it is possible in any other country that the same paragraph of the Constitution that guarantees freedom of the press, guarantees freedom of political association, and one is used against the other? Boy, in a real country, Sabda News Network and Massey Media both lost their license already. But in Trinidad and Tobago, they can gang up and hide an entire political movement from the people because they damn well know that Philip Edward Alexander in government ends the drug trade. They know that Philip Edward Alexander in government ends the corruption, that the whole bullshitocracy set up to run this country, that masqueraded as healthcare, home ownership, education, food production. Food production, 36 years, bro. 36 I mean, to, to 56 years, we can't make ourselves food certification $3 trillion dollars, Clarence. 56 years. How long does it take to grow a tree? How long? How long? The people of this country need to ask themselves, what are we prepared to put up with again? What are we prepared to stomach again? They're doing us anything they want. They went in the parliament and they make a law. They make a law to come and tax your house. What left? What left? This is a country where illegal to be poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
from France. We moved 720 billion in one decade and have nothing to show for it. Nothing. <laughs>
1996. It is the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And you need to understand this. You need to know this more than you know Doran Slack. You need to know this. Whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago have affirmed that the nation of Trinidad and Tobago is founded upon principles that acknowledge the supremacy of God, faith in fundamental human rights and freedoms, the position of the family in a society of free men and free institutions, the dignity of the human person, and the equal and inalienable rights with which all members of the human family are endowed by their creator. Whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago respect the principles of social justice and therefore believe that the operation of the economic system, listen to this, should result in the material resources of the community, that is Trinidad and Tobago, being so distributed as to subserve the common good, that there should be adequate means of livelihood for all, that labor should not be exploited or forced by economic necessity to operate in inhumane conditions, but that there should be opportunity for advancement on the basis of recognition of merit, ability, and integrity Whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago have asserted their belief in a democratic society in which all persons may, to the extent of their capacity, play some part in the institutions of the national life and thus develop and maintain due respect for lawfully constituted authority. Whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago recognize that men and institutions remain free only when freedom is founded upon respect for moral and spiritual values and the rule of law. Whereas the people of Trinidad and Tobago desire that their constitution should enshrine the above mentioned principles and beliefs and make provision for ensuring the protection in Trinidad and Tobago of fundamental rights and freedoms. <laughs> to show support for their country of birth. Trinidad and Tobago, offspring of these people who've never seen Trinidad and Tobago, or probably never came here, came out in their numbers. This coming Saturday here, um, New York chapter is having a brunch. Again, all of this is to raise funds to rescue Trinidad and Tobago. We're working on something for Florida, and we're setting up the United Kingdom. Pet chapters, a political organization that in its first 12 and 4, 16 months of existence, has real and credible chapters globally and the mother-ass media wouldn't cover us. I am going to do a video and I'm giving them notice. I'm going to call live on live on social media. All, and they will get catch with this, all of the editors and the heads of news to ask them live why it is you don't cover the PEP. Panda give all their brain fart in a meeting and they give him real mileage. But the Progressive Empowerment Party that has had 50 weekly meetings and 17 public rallies, you're hiding from the people and relying on the Constitution to protect the freedom of the press when the press is being used against the people. If for 20 years, you vote in the day. notorious as a narco state globally where billions of cocaine billions of dollars of cocaine have passed through how come neither Manning, Kamala, Pandey or Rowley have secured the nation's borders how come 
continue to exist without discrimination by reason of race, origin, color, religion, or sex, the following fundamental human rights and freedoms, namely, A, the right of the individual to life, liberty, security of the person, and enjoyment of property, and the right not to be deprived, therefore, except by due process of law. What Colin Edward did in the parliament, that is abuse of parliament, that is not due process of law. If your recession is over, if your fake recession done, why do you need property tax in a nation where the vast majority of the earnings of the country belong to the people? Mikey Naus tell me, and I agree with him, everything in Trinidad and Tobago come out the ground, just add labor. It is hereby recognized the right of the individual to equality before the law and the protection of law, the right of the individual to respect for his private and family life, the right of the individual to, to equality of treatment from the public, from any public authority, in the exercise of any functions, the right to join political parties and to express political views, the right of a parent or guardian to provide a school of his own choice for the education of his child or ward, Freedom of movement, freedom of conscience and, conscience and religious belief and observance, freedom of thought and expression, freedom of association and assembly, and freedom of the press. Freedom of political views, far up that list, above freedom of the press, but freedom of the press being used against the people of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs>
Nothing works, and if we want a country where we could be the paradise on earth that we were meant to be, we have to realize that if the PNM and the UNC had any plan for this country, you would have seen something by now besides a theftocracy, besides overnight fat cats appearing from nowhere, coming to government with your hand dragging and come out wearing Rolex, driving diamond glaze. This country is broken by design, deliberately from inside by the government, by those with authority. We have a nation broken. recession because the party falling apart below them it done too late UNC eating one another all of them gonna start you wanna see all of them gonna start a bus mark now because Kamala and Michaela draw the lines in the sand two shut up you know neither of them have a plan for the country you know but then fighting the you can run it Vassan Barat Vassan you listen to Vassan you swear you might have a plan you might have a plan I read a whole comment thread if you see them talking and they ask him, one another asking, where it is the, where's your plan? Where's your plan? Nobody can get a plan yet. Nobody can tell you where they're going. Eh? Anyway, this coming Saturday at noon, 19 Stango Avenue, we're building out the party. Come and join. Come and make yourself available. Come and serve. If you're available to serve outside of Trinidad Tobago, reach out to Ali G. Just tell her where you are. Because we have a big and vibrant, massive team in Canada, Toronto, Canada. We're building in Florida. We have Ali and her crew in New York City and the UK. If you're in the UK, we're now starting to assemble in London. So if you want to be a part of the UK chapter of the PEP, reach out to Ali G. She's the Grand Ambassador. She will take care of you and make sure that you get handled properly. After what we saw Pep Toronto do, Saturday gone. I know the bar high. PLM and UNC see it too, and they know. They know what's coming. Trinbegonians with brain and sense don't jump on board the Progressive Empowerment Party. This is the only political organization in the country that's self funding. Imagine that. Self funding, no deep pocket finances. And right now we're launching Pep Farms and Pep Cafe. Pep Farms, we have 55 acres of land. We're going to be working in joint venture with farmers to grow and sell food, to bring the price of food down and fund the party with that. Pep Cafe as well. When you want to come and hang out with us, we'll hang out in Pep Cafe and drink nice coffee and eat some with the too. Trinidad and Tobago, the time for us to rescue this country is now. Don't wait another week, another month. Don't wait another year. Don't, don't, they want to tell you about what's coming. 
The only thing that come in in this country is more torture, more stress, more madness. All of these people have 56 years and $3 trillion to work in. And what we get for it? Jam and more jam. Pressure and more pressure. Failure and more failure. Eh? Think about it. Peptrinbago at gmail.com is the email address. Peptt.com is the website. 3474PEP is the hotline. Pep app, PEP, APP is the app. It's available on all the app stores, free of charge to download. There is Pep Radio, and we're testing now. Pep Media exists. If you're interested in being a part of Pep Media and you want to help grow Pep Media because we want to bypass Samga News Network and Massey Media, we want to bypass them. We want to show this nation that there are people with balls, belly, and backbone willing to take on the oligarchs. Not like Pandey and Rowley looking to go and dress up like Massa and play golf like Massa and walk around behind Massa and say, I'm getting whiter today. You see, the madness of what has passed for government in this country needs to be exposed and it needs to be eviscerated. We need to annihilate the PNM and UNC at the polls. We need 41 seats, pep strong. The Orange Army, the Orange Tsunami, coming to wash clean. Build your party. This is yours. Come this Saturday at noon and meet the family you never knew you always needed. Trinidad and Tobago, stand firm, stand strong. We could rescue our country. It ain't too late for Trinidad and Tobago. But if we continue with these two cancers, red and ready and yellow and steady, we dead. We in trouble. Rome burning. Titanic sinking. Mama Trini crying. It is time to stand together as one people under one flag and rescue our country. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.